We specifically knew what we were doing. We specifically knew that eventually everything that we were going to do was going to be this shape, yeah. right? Other than that, we had total freedom. It's quite rare for uh for a, a band to be as, as interested in their visual representation, as interested in, in the art that accompanies it, and to, you know, kind of commit to this guy who just says, I'm gonna go big, and I'm gonna paint with soot and knives. He was the guy at art college you could actually paint, they kicked me out. When I met him, first day, I thought, um, he sat there with a book, and you're totally aloof. I thought, I'm right, either really going to hate this bloke, or I'm only going to end up working with him forever. <laughs> One of the two. And then when we signed a record deal, and I first had to deal with like the graphic designers and so on, I'm like, oh, I, can't, I can't cope with this. This is like yeah. a sort of manufacturing business. And then he phoned up one time and said, do you want to have a go at doing a record cover? And I thought, yeah, I'll have a go. And we bought a computer, and we set about doing the bends. Mm, that and that was it, really. We just carried on from there. Yeah. The idea of, of the record shop as, as a, a democratic, non-hierarchical art gallery, where the art itself has no intrinsic value because it's just a printed piece of cardboard, was something I really, really liked. After the OK Computer Tour, I was a bit ragged and I couldn't really do anything creatively. Um, my partner, Rachel, said to me, that, um, you should just go back to your art. Stop doing music for a while because it's kind of too loaded. We had this barn to work in that, that the band had bought with all this success. Suddenly we were in this big space and suddenly painting seemed like a really, absolutely the right thing to do because everything we'd done to that point had been on, on a, tablet. Uh, we, you know, we had our Apple Mac set up and we had our posh scanner and shit but it was just really dry. And I was like, right, we're not doing this thing anymore. We're gonna use sticks and knives and we're gonna lose our sleeves to make marks and do great big, massive pictures as big as we can fit in the, on the walls here. I'll do my art crit sitting down. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. This is a painting that I did uh, in response to certain distressing events in the former Yugoslavia. The Balkans had sort of fragmented people who looked like us, people who wore clothes like us, who watched telly had the same stuff. They were dying and being killed and putting each other in concentration camps and dragging each other along and wrapped in barbed wire behind tanks. It seeped in, in a, uh, it, you know, because you start off wanting to explore landscapes, started off wandering around Cornwall, yeah. and the next thing you know, there's snow-covered landscapes, there's blood everywhere. I started using this white stuff. Ironically, it's the sort of decorating medium that you use to conceal defects. But, of course, when it's wet, you can inscribe it and you can throw things at it and they'll stick. You can throw soot at it, you can throw gravel at it. What was nice was seeing him, like, really get loose on canvas and, and just letting rip and not caring. Yes. It was really exciting. Otherwise, things like that Otherwise, happen. that <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> We were kind of like a bit crazy about keeping loads of sketchbooks. I've got loads of them. And a lot of the ideas that then found their way into paintings originated was just, you know, a doodle or, or a scratch or an idea late at night or something. We were finally free in a workspace that we'd built and set up ourselves to be exactly as we wanted. And we had no deadline, so everything was informing everything. Most of them were done in a mezzanine above where the recording studio was. I dabbled. There's, there's, bit, there's bits of your work, but I've kind of almost completely... You painted over them, I can't understand why. Bastard. <laughs> yeah. I'm working on the artwork and what it will become while they're working on the music and what it will become. I was just in this space where there was just music happening all the time. I'd find it hard to look at these without hearing the, the music. It's kind of in them. It's encoded. So we would take these paintings and use them as the basis for the work we wanted to do, to give it this emotion that we were trying to express. But then you could use the computer, you could use the little thing, and you could, you could add in these, these elements that were previously impossible, they couldn't have been made.
We were into sampling, we were into the idea of like scanning, blah, 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 building textures in real life and then pulling them into the computer and see what we could do with them on every level, which is why we had a broken typewriter, which is why we'd scrunch it up and put it in someone's pocket and then flatten it out. All this is it's assembled, 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 but at the same time, it's all informed by this collage, detritus kind of mentality everything about it. It will be really great that people can actually see this work because it's, it will be the first time this work's been able to be seen for what it is. This is us speaking and this is how we see stuff and I'm proud of this period because this period of work was when we found a kind of voice through the artwork and it just developed into something exciting and something wasn't just for a record cover, it was something way beyond that.